to the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkan Wiesma, also known as EJ. So yes, today we have another uh, Blooms, Buds and Such, which is basically an update video on several things going on in the greenhouse, in the Orchid Room next to me, and also uh, sometimes I put in a, a few requests, uh, as I will do today. So starting with, uh, with that, uh, so you know what's coming up in this video, we will have some requests. I had, did took, took some notes. Uh, I'm going to talk about my Vanda's, Vanda setup, there is going to be a change. Um, and I will do an update on my Bulba Final Family Opsis. Yes, I still have it. Uh, I'm not sure, can you see it? Yes, you can see it next to me. It's hard to see for me in the frame, but yeah, there it is. Finally, something is happening to that one. Uh, and I will end this video with some new blooms, because I know on the, end, on the end of this month I will do a bloom update, but some just cannot wait. They are so beautiful. So we're going to have a look at those as well. So, but first of all, something uh, also uh, going to be different. Uh, you might notice it, I hope in my next video, that I will have a new camera. And a camera with uh, that also allows for external mics to put in. So then I can start using a wireless mic again. Because this one, uh, this camera did have that option, but it doesn't work anymore. So about two or three months ago, I had some issues with, uh, with the uh, sound, as you may remember. Now I just use the internal uh, 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 microphone of this camera, but it's, it's not that good. So I'm working on it and it will allow me to move around again, which I like while filming, uh, in, at, at least in some cases. Anyhow, I'm getting that camera as a birthday gift. So just so you know, last uh, Thursday, uh, the 12th of September, uh, it was my birthday. So uh, yeah, um, and I said to my, <laughs> my husband, he, uh, he did ask, what would you like for your birthday, as we always do, because to be honest, we, there's basically nothing that we really need. We have everything and we are happy, we are healthy, we are enjoying life. But yeah, of course, it's nice to have gifts and it's nice to have something that you would like to add into your life, your collection, whatever. So I did give him a hint with uh, capital letters. I said, well, there's something that I would want and that's a new camera. Uh, because of the the sound issues that I have, and cameras is, are, cameras are quite expensive, especially if you want to have something that is a bit better zooming wise and the quality of the the footage, etc., the screen, the colors, the pixels, etc., and of of course the sound. So, but I I did found one that wasn't that expensive and hopefully does the job. So. There are always, um, you have a, f a few days you can test uh, your product before you, uh, you, you always have the ability to return something, at least in my country. Uh, I think it's uh, for 30 days, something like that, I'm not completely sure. So I will test it straight away out of the box and see if it does the job well. So probably next week I will have a new camera, who knows, we shall see. So let's uh, move on to the next subject of this video. So, and the next subject is the question that I did get quite recently, actually. So, uh, for once, I am uh, on schedule uh, from uh, Wanda Shaw. Um, she asked if I could talk about a little bit uh, about the care that I would give my, or I am giving my plants, same, uh, growing in semi hydroponic uh, during winter. And I completely understand that question because it can be quite tricky because of the temperatures. Uh, also the light, we all have that if you are growing uh, with a wet dry cycle, but especially if you grow uh, your plants in full water culture, semi hydroponic uh, uh, or self watering, all of them are a sort of a water culture, you could say. Yeah, you have the challenge uh, to keep that water, your reservoir, the water in your reservoir at a certain uh, temperature level. Because if it goes to cold, which can happen quite quickly, you will lose your roots, your plants will not like it, because most of these plants would like a, uh, are, are tropical of course, so they like a certain amount of, of higher temperature. So, um, well the biggest thing, I, I basically already gave you a, a, a sort of answer on that, is keep your, uh, your, your temperatures at a certain level. I have mine, in a greenhouse, in an orchid room, the minimum temperature is 18 degrees, and I believe it's 16.4 Fahrenheit, but I will have it in the screen, just to be sure. 
So it's, for me, it's 18 degrees. We do degrees here. Um, that doesn't mean that's the surrounding, the, the, the surrounded uh, air temperature, basically. The water temperature, I am lucky if it stays on 80 degrees, but most of the times it goes down and it drops down to 16, sometimes even to 15 degrees. So there's a bit of a, a, um, a differential there. And it just happens. And I see, do not see this happening quite often in summer that much. I think because everything, the pots, the walls, everything is warmer. So it, they will uh, release the heat during night. Uh, um, and and that, that just keeps everything a little bit warmer. And thereby, uh, I think my reservoirs are at 18 up to 20 degrees, something like that. I do not use heat mats because I have so many plants. I just don't want to use them, it's too much. So I have two heaters, they are, those are set. Um, I have that, that digital uh, gadget thing, I cannot remember the name on top of my head in English. But uh, it will kickstart the heating at a certain um, temperature. So if it goes below, below uh, the 18 degrees, it will start the heating at 17.5. And that works for me. Yeah, it works. It's not perfect. And you may hear me mention that in several videos before, especially when I talk about my Cattleyas and the Dendrobium family abscesses, the, the actually warmer growers. Those really, really enjoy the high temperatures. And those are, most of them, I'm, I'm not sure if it's half, but let's say 25% of my plants, and I think that's still a little bit too much, are dropping the roots because I cannot keep that reservoir above that 15 degrees. It should stay on 17, 17 or 18, but it goes below um, that, especially in midwinter when it's freezing and especially when there's a little bit of wind, quite a little bit of wind, everything gets so cold. So yeah, that's the challenge that I have and that's why I came up with my net pots because of the air, I just said. The air is just warmer, the surrounding air is warmer. So let's, um, I thought, let's try to get it in more in, into the pots. And that brings me to my second tip. What I also saw which works better is just um, when you have a certain amount of water in your reservoir, just put half in or maybe even less and just see how they uh, react to that. My plants do better because there's less water, so less areas of that pot have a too cold temperature. So uh, let's say 80% is at a temperature they like and 20 is too cold. That gives you a sort of balance where some of the warmer grow plants didn't lose all the roots or um, uh, maybe just some pieces that were still in the water and the rest just stayed on. So that's an improvement. But for me, that is not enough. I just want to keep the roots on there. So that's why I came up with more air holes in my pots, etc. It is a subject that I'm stu still working on. So I don't make, I didn't make a video on completely on that subject. It will be here on my channel, but it will be next year, next spring, I think, uh, because I'm still, um, trying things and just need the winter. I don't like winter, but I need the winter uh, to be happened and then to see my results. If I still have the roots there or perhaps they just did die off anyhow. So I need results and I can then make a video based on those results. That's, that's the only thing I can, can do here and can give you guys because it is a way of growing um, that's a little bit different. Uh, of course, there's a water culture, there's semi-hydroponics, but because I don't flush, um, mine, I did change my setup and I love it. It works very well for me, but there are some points that can use as uh, some improvement, I, I know. And, but I like it. It's a puzzle. I always keep referring to it as a puzzle and we need to get those pieces fitting in nicely together. And I love doing that. Brings me to my second, uh, my third point, and it's the going to, uh, for now, going to be the last point because this is the most important. I assume uh, you you take uh, notice of your light levels. I mean, if your plants, whatever media you're growing them in, are too dark, they will not be happy. Um, and the amount of fertilizer, if your plant is not growing, it doesn't need a fertilizer. I hope that that was uh, already covered. If not, 
uh, or any other uh, person out there that's watching this video, please let me know if you want to understand that better. I can make a video about that, but I, I assume that Wanda already does understand that because I see her on a lot of different channels and I think she is a, a quite experienced. She knows that already. Anyhow, like I said, if you're not that experienced, don't hesitate, ask your questions. That's a beautiful way of learning. But like I said, that brings me uh, to my uh, third uh, and last uh, tip for now. It has something to, something basically to do with the first one. Uh, maybe you want to lower the amount of water into your reservoir. And especially if you have more plants. I have uh, 470 now, something like that. I think 400, at least 450, uh, 60 I believe are growing in, in self-watering. Anyhow. Uh, try to understand your plants. So what I try to do this winter is just give them enough water uh, for seven days. I water once a week and I will keep it like that because I just don't have the time to water more often. But at the end of those seven days I still want to have a teeny tiny bit of moisture to say the least in, inside of the reservoir and in the pots it should still be moist, damp. So I'm not going to let up dry my plants, but drier. So um, by that I hope I can also uh, keep the temp temperatures a little bit higher, like we just discussed, because of the, the less of uh, water and more air, I hope it, it uh, results in a little bit of higher temperature. And that can be quite tricky because uh, you need to have a bit of understanding how much your plants are drinking. My plants keep on growing during winter because I keep the temperatures up, I have the light levels uh, and I have the light the lights on for several hours, about 12 hours. I do not go below that, I just keep them at 12 hours. So I keep my plants growing. They may slow down a little bit, just a little bit, here and there, but uh, most of them keep on growing. So they need the water and they need the feed. I, as you know, I'm not great at names of plants and people, names in general. I keep forgetting them. So if you ask me, um, because I am a sort of admire those growers that just know a plant, they know the parents behind it, etc. I just need to look it up and sometimes I remember it, but most of the time it's just those names will not stick in my head. But I remember uh, with people faces and with my plants the way they grow, the, the, the way they behave. Um, and I want to know that, so I sort of trained my brain to take notice of things. Even with so many plants, I bet if you would uh, point one out and ask me if this is a big drinker or not, I think I have a pretty close answer. That's just who I am. I like it, but that's what works for my brain. So I know which plants I can lower that amount of water and which plants that need that, uh, just that amount I'm always giving them, that higher amount I'm referring to. Um, you may think a bigger plant automatically needs more water and that is not true. That mistake I did make in the beginning, several years back, I, I, I found that some smaller plants do drink quite a bit if you compare them to bigger ones. So I would say Talking about puzzles again, try to find those pieces. Try to really understand the plants you are growing. Like I said, some people uh, know the names, some people know both, of course. I, I, am difficulty, I have difficulties with the names, but I do know my plants. And I think that is one of the biggest tips as well I can give you. Know what you are working with, know what you can expect. And uh, so we can uh, adjust things when needed if you need to, and I, I think that's an, a very nice habit to get into. So not only water your plants, not only feed them and have a look, but try to understand what they are doing, try to know your plants. I, I hope I uh, do explain it well, but yeah, that works. Once you get into the habit of that, you see their behavior and you know what to do. And, and that's, that's ex basically experience and it's beautiful. I love it. So I hope this is useful. Let me know if you still have questions or other questions as well in the comment section below. I really enjoy them, so keep them coming up. Now we're going to have a look at my vanilla orchids. <laughs> and yes, that made me smile thinking of my vanilla and this is why. Finally, you guys, we have a growing tip. 
and you can if you follow that stem this is completely new so once it starts to growing it actually starts growing but you can see i want to have it uh connected to the grid so i can move it around my uh, greenhouse that was the plan all the way all those years but what happens sort of we just uh, like we just discussed is the temperature the vanilla is like it warmer and i just cannot give that amount of heat. So what happens all the time is that this, these tips, these growing tips start running off and it starts growing again in a new season, in a, most of the times in summer, almost midsummer to the end of summer. So it has a few months to grow and then it dies back. But this is the first time I grow it at this height. It's very close to the roof, as you can see. I'm sorry for that uh, bulb. I tried to uh, avoid it, the lamp there, the lights. Um, but um, yeah, so maybe it, uh, as, you, as we know, the, the warmth travels, it likes to go up. So be near the roof, there is all, uh, always it's a bit warmer there. So I hope that helps uh, to keep this one growing. But so far it's doing well. It didn't do much uh, for new growth, but it did grow roots. And we have several roots uh, on the wall, well, actually one big root. And we do get a new one over here, as you can see there. So a few over there. So yeah, it looks promising. There are a few dry roots behind. I know that it's from a fell that was once living there. <laughs> and this is from a different angle. And now you can clearly see that root. I hope you can see it goes all the way down, 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 down here. And now it's behind the wood and I'm not completely sure what it's want to do there. <laughs> but that was the first thing. So it, it not necessarily didn't grow, but it didn't grow a new shoot. It was growing roots. So, um, yeah, I tried to avoid the, the lights there, but yeah, and these are just all the leaves. They are still there, still firm. So it has the energy. It has been through a lot, but let's hope that it will do better now. So this is an old part. I was hoping for several new growths, new shoots, but I don't. It, it, so far it only did, does give one end over there. And then I think I'm going to let it move this way. So who knows, but that's a uh, beautiful update, I think, on my vanilla. It's growing again. <laughs> so yes, talking about my uh, vendas, uh, there will be a change here. Um, I have a different setup in mind. I'm a little bit nervous because in my mind it makes sense and it will look beautiful. Uh, but yeah, if that is going to be the reality, who knows? I know sometimes you, ha you have these ideas and like I said, they... they in your, in your mind, they are beautiful and they're going to work out very smoothly and look very well, etc. And then you start making those chains and then it's like, hmm, no, I didn't thought of that or it does look completely different than I thought, etc. I'm not about, I, know, I don't know about you guys, but that's how I am. I just need to see it and then I know this is going to work or not, etc. Anyhow, that is an upcoming video. So I will, uh, I think that's going to be one of those videos where I'm going to change things and I'm going to speed things up. Bit of music in there. Personally, I enjoy these uh, videos um, because I because it happens. I'm not really into moving a lot around. If something is working, I keep it like that. But I need to do this. Uh, and this is why I'm going to change the camera angle a little bit. So we're going to move it up and, oh yeah, of course, my tolumnias are in the way. Just, just a minute. So yeah, this works better. We're a little bit closer, but I'm going for this area over here. I hope you can see this. This is nearer to the roof. It's such a beast, this one. Maybe you saw it on my last shorts that I did. It's such a beautiful uh flower and it has a, this little smiley face inside of there it's that that's the short is uh, about that but no, um yeah not about the change of course but you can see it's very very large it's absolutely huge and it has at least seven cakes in there so this is my biggest vendor but yeah i'm i'm running out of uh <laughs> room for it so i need to come up with a solution the last time we did change the pots those are working pretty well um but yeah, now they are doing so well. They did do well, but they still do well. So they keep on growing and they need more room. An upcoming video. Not sure when, but it will be here someday. <laughs>
Bulbophyllum phalaeopsis. Here she is with a beautiful big leaf. So I hope you did remember this uh, plant, or if you knew her too much, you may not have seen it, but I will have uh, videos about her, or, or a video. This is probably one of the most expensive plants that I did buy, but I love it and I'm happy it's still here. I was a bit nervous to plant it in a self-watering pot, but let me tell you, it loves it. It absolutely lovely. It loves it. Because what it did was making roots and roots and roots, and it's still working on roots. So that was one thing she did. Uh, within a couple of weeks, this oldest bulb did make a flower spike. So I, I probably have it in one of those blooming updates. But not uh, long after it started blooming, I did cut it off because I saw a lot of shriveling going on on the bulbs. And I was like, oh, this is not good. I'm losing too much energy. So I cut the flowers off. I did see a, pur a hint of purple when I have it uh, where my vanilla was, a little bit lower, but where my vanilla was, so I thought too much light. So I put it down there, uh, right around this corner, I believe. Didn't do anything, so I thought, well, this may be too dark. So I put it over there where my uh, summer blooming fells, uh, yeah, summer blooming fells are. So a little bit more light. Yet still, it, it did drink its reservoir. Every week I need to keep on watering it because it, it really loves the water. But no growth, no growth. Besides the roots, it kept the growing roots. So there was something going on, but no new growth, not, nothing. So it's now hanging here for, well, not more than three weeks, but I, I think about three, two or three weeks. I just hang it here. So I have it closer to the roof, so it does get uh, more light. And lo and behold, there's something happening. I will grab the camera in a second. But I'm referring to this because I did, give, uh, did get the, um, the advice to give it the same amount as a phenoliopsis, uh, uh, yeah, same amount of light. So I did that. But if you ask me now, based on the experience I have with this one, it's sort of through. If you look at my fails, I have some near the roof and some very well, halfway down, and some even almost at the floor. All of them bloom. Some do not do not like it up there. I had to change a few. Uh, they did get some birds, but some stay there and doesn't show, do not show any signs of burn or the pur purple color, so they enjoy the, the heat. So there's a little bit of variety there. That's what I'm trying to say. This one I would definitely class on the highest, of, highest end of that variety. So if you grow this one, and he was looking for a little bit of care. This is just my experience, but I would put it, give it a little bit more uh, light than typical you will give to your fails. Not way higher, because then it will show those uh, that, that purple color again, too much light, but higher. So that, I just wanted to mention that for those who grow this one and do not see much happening as well. I'm gonna grab the camera now because there, like I said, there's something happening. I just saw it this morning while I was watering my plants. So I'm just going to share this, it's beautiful. So yes, here we are. And maybe you already see it, but look at that. At least something quite pointy and green, fresh green is coming out of this bulb. The spike was on the other side. Yeah, that's, I think it's this part, that's a bit of brownish part. Not completely sure. Yeah, yeah, that's the leftover from that spike. So it did came from that side. That end. So I'm still not sure if this is a spike or a new growth. Um, yeah, I, I love the bloom, but I really hope for a new growth. It really uh, should be uh, making something like that right now. But anyhow, if it's a bloom, I'm, I'm going to leave it on because it now has m way more roots. I, not sure if maybe I can show you some. It's a bit hard filming. Yeah, there, over there, you can see a white line. That's a root. Um, yeah, I'm not completely sure. It's hard to, to see right now. There we go. Look at that. I wasn't lying. I wasn't lying, you guys. <laughs> Loads of roots. So it kept on growing and growing those roots, which is fine, of course. But yeah, I really was looking forward to a new growth. If you grow this, yeah, maybe you know it already. It's very pointy. Uh, I believe that, generally speaking, the more pointy new growths, new shoots are excellent new growths. And the flower spikes on most orchids, I believe, are a bit more rounder. But I'm not sure. I don't have that experience yet. But who knows? 
And you know, if it would be a new growth, it's perfect. It's almost in the middle of the pot. You can see that it has this angle, oops, angle going on. So I was afraid that the new growth was coming from here or something, but it's more there now. If it is a new growth, let's hope it is. Let's hope it is. So yes, uh, finally, I could do an update on this beautiful Bobophyllum phenoliopsis. And now we will have a look at some beautiful blooms. This was in the blooming update, but I did give it a, its own uh, state. <laughs> this is my BLC yellow bird, just because to admire these beautiful blooms. And it has so many. And uh, yeah, this is the. It, uh, yeah, it has four spikes. This was the second one to open, that was the third one. The fourth one is over here, there, and the first one. What's this one? And there goes the last blue. <laughs> but yeah, it's quite a size and it's so beautiful. So I thought, yeah, you coming off that shelf and you're gonna be living temporarily here so we can enjoy it. And here are some other bloomers. And this is just starting to open up. Isn't this pretty? Beautiful colors. This is my BLC Delta King Tinker Glow. So that should be, be this one. Let's go over here. I know I have a lot of videos on my Miltonias yet, but yeah, I'm sorry. I cannot not ignore this and <laughs> I keep filming them. But there's a new one opening up. Uh, not really new, but it's new in this season. I had it on my channel, on, in my growing space before, but I love the shape of this. Beautiful. This is the uh, Angela Baker. Yeah, Miltonia Angela Baker. And I, yeah, like I said, the shape of that bloom, so nice. Whoops, there a, goes an old leaf. Stunning. And this one next to it, Memorial, has such a great fragrance. So you, I wish there was smell of vision <laughs> Anyhow, so let's move around. I need to be careful with all these spikes. And this purple one is opening up. We have a lot of blooms. So it's a beautiful bouquet over here. So that is that, and now let's go inside of the Ocarina. Oh, before I forget, I do not have much Hoyas, but I have the Shooting Star. And mine is blooming again. Hillbilly did uh, quite a beautiful video on hers that has quite a lot of blooms. Mine is not nearly as big, but it's constantly blooming. So far, no fragrance. So I'm not completely sure. I thought it would be honey-like, but I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> Let's go inside of here, whoops. Ah, the box from last week, I need still need to uh, throw it away. Yes, here she is. This is so beautiful. I absolutely love her. The shape of those blooms and of course the colors, the details. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Let me grab the tag. It's come from uh, Equigenra, we have two more spikes, we have one here and one there. So purple, we have two spikes and this is the name for it. If you are interested in it, here she is, beautiful. At least that's what I think, of course. <laughs> Let's move on. There's one that would like, uh, yeah, another one here, before I forget. It's same colors, I know, but I love these colors together. <laughs> Look at this, first time blooming, absolutely stunning, also from that same order from Equigenra, and this is the name. Yeah, those are my favorite colors. Why am I filming this? I'm not completely sure if this is going to make the blooming update, because we have some shriveling going on, even though the newest bulb looks fine, this is the previous one that did decide to uh, bloom, I saw bush nails. So I have this in this tray and I need to fill it up. I have some water normally in here. So I keep the potential bush, bush snails that are still in there uh, isolated. And I need to repot it. So that's why I cut the spike. I just wanted to leave it bloom on a few blooms so I can enjoy them. And it wouldn't take up too much of energy. That's at least the plan. And then I can repot it. But it needs to be in a 
Yeah, the best time to repolish is obviously when it does make new roots, and it's currently not doing that. It's now putting all the energy in there, so I'm that's why I'm cutting the spikes, so I'm cutting that cycle. I'm just shortening the time where it's in sort of blooming stage. <laughs> it needs to think on uh, growing again, so that's what I'm trying to encourage her to by cutting off a spike. And yeah, it's almost already going over a little bit it was in my last uh, just starting to bloom this is my dendrophyllum magnum if i can read whoops the tag it's just underneath the pot here it is it's so beautiful it's yeah this is going over normally it's more brighter uh yellow let me put it like this but i mean all those teeny tiny blooms almost make one big flower sort of kind of <laughs> Yeah, it intrigues me, these types of blooming habits. So that's why I wanted to, oops, there's, you see, there you go. Yeah, this is not long, these blooms are not long lived, but anyhow, they are so beautiful. So yeah, my dendrophyllum uh, magnum. Oh yeah, before I forget, uh, we are nearly at the end of this video. Um, just a teeny tiny little update on uh, my poisoned plants. Uh, actually, that video did wonderfully well. I'm not completely sure, but, it, <laughs> but <laughs> apparently we need to poison our plants to get extra views. Just kidding, of course. I completely understand why. Um, because you just want to know, and I think uh, people are interested in the subject, in the title I did something uh, with people, and of course you want to learn how not to poison your plants. So uh, that was exactly the reason why I filmed it. So thank you so much. But, um, and, and I did get a lot of sweet comments about it. Uh, it was a very difficult and hard video to film. Uh, like I said in at least one comment, I think a few of them is that I, in this case, I needed just a little bit longer to get into that positive state of mind again. But I'm back, completely back. And like I said, a little teeny tiny update. At this point, and we now are one, two weeks later, something like that, all the plants are still alive. And all the plants are doing at least something. Um, I'm not completely sure if they're going to be alive because I'm not completely sure if I agree with, with the things that I start, they're starting to do. But anyhow, that's an upcoming video. It's going to be an interesting one and actually a good one, I think. I hope. But so far, they are all alive. Oh, that's uh, a relief to say the least. So thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, like I said, an update is coming. That was it for now. Um, I just filmed this in one go, so I have the feeling that it was uh, kind of sort of all over the place, but in a good way, uh, different setups. Let me know if you like that, if you like this type of videos. I really enjoy filming them. It gives me the ability to show more of your plans. Uh, uh, this is a uh, shoot. You see, I forget the names, you guys. Hancockii, of course. My Dendrobium Hancockii, for for example, we do not see that very often, but it's still here um, because there's not really much happening, perhaps, etc. But anyhow, uh, I like these different setups, and let me know. And of course, if you have questions, requests, or maybe you saw an orchid in the background and you want to know more about it, let me know. I love to film it. One last thing, uh, I'm not completely sure what videos I'm going to make upcoming weeks because uh, I, obviously I need to see what is happening, what I can do. We are preparing for uh, a, a one week on vacation. So the last week, the whole week of September, that's the 23rd of September, it's an on, a, on a Monday, me and my husband will take a vacation. That's the first time in eight years. So uh, we are really looking forward to it. I'm kind of excited. There's a lot of happened in the past, but now um, we made it happen that we can go on a vacation and it's uh, very nice, but I'm going to see. I want to put up f uh, videos on all the Sundays before the vacation, after vacation. I'm not completely sure how to do it, but I will uh, probably will find a way. But anyhow, something uh, for us personally to look forward to. And yeah, that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you so much. And also to my new subscribers. I had quite a few of them. Thank you so much. And obviously to all of you subscribers. I never will forget all of you guys. You, we are making this channel together. And I enjoy it so much. So thank you so much for your uh, support, basically. And your kind comments. And even if you don't leave comments, you're here. You're probably liking my videos. Maybe you share it on occasion. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. And I hope to see you at one of my next videos. 
拜拜。